Today we'll be talking about evaluating a patient with drug overdose. When a patient is brought to the emergency department with suspected drug overdose, it can become very nerve wracking, especially if the provider does not know how to proceed in a knowledgeable and competent manner. Certainly, in true emergencies, time equals life. While a rapid flow is necessary, it does not always result in efficiency. Competence embodies knowledge and the rapid and accurate execution of that knowledge. This is a patient who was brought in by EMS. The first thing I want to do is to check his ABCs. Number one, is his throat clear? Number two, is his chest rising? Are there breath sounds on auscultation? Number three, is there a pulse? Are his vital signs within normal range? Once I know that his airway is patent, he's breathing, and he has a pulse, I can take the next step. The next thing I want to do for this patient is a finger stick. I want to know if he is hypoglycemic. If indeed he is hypoglycemic, I will give him one amp D50 and reevaluate his response. If his finger stick is normal, then I want to make sure there is no alcohol on his breath. This patient's finger stick is normal and there is no alcohol on his breath. Now I can proceed to the physical examination. The physical examination will include number one, the eyes, number two, lungs and the respiration, number three, the heart, number four, the abdomen, and number five, the mucous membrane and the skin. On the eye exam, I am looking for two things. Number one, pupillary constriction, and number two, pupillary dilation. Pupillary constriction is a parasympathetic effect or a cholinergic effect. Pupillary dilation is a sympathetic effect or an anticholinergic effect. On the lung exam, I am looking for bilateral air entry and equal rising of both chest walls. I also want to know if he is breathing too fast, which is tachypnea, or too slow, which is near apneic. Parasympathetic stimulation constricts the bronchi, while sympathetic stimulation dilates the bronchi and increases respiratory rate. On the heart exam, I am checking for bradycardia. I am also checking for tachycardia and I am checking for arrhythmias. Parasympathetic and cholinergic effects slow the heart down while sympathetic and anticholinergic effects increase heart rate. On the abdominal exam, I want to know the following. Number one, if bowel sounds are normal. Number two, if bowel sounds are hyperactive. Number three, if bowel sounds are hypoactive. Now, parasympathetic and cholinergic effects increase bowel sounds, while sympathetic and anticholinergic effects decrease bowel sounds. On the examination of the skin and mucous membrane, I want to know the following. Number one, 
I am checking if the skin is dry and hot. Number two, I am checking if the skin is cool, moist, and clammy. Number three, I am checking if the mucous membrane is dry. And number four, I am checking if the mucous membrane is moist. The sympathetic system stimulates sweat glands, therefore causing moist and warm skin. The sympathetic system also decreases salivary and nasal mucosus secretion, causing dry membrane. The parasympathetic system has no effect on sweat glands. However, anticholinergic effects may be seen as dry, hot skin. Now let's compare the parasympathetic and the sympathetic systems. In terms of the eyes, the parasympathetic constricts the pupils while the sympathetic dilates the pupils. In terms of the salivary gland, the parasympathetic stimulates salivation while the sympathetic inhibits salivation. In terms of the heart, the parasympathetic slows the heart down while the sympathetic accelerates heart rate. In terms of the lungs, the parasympathetic constricts the bronchi while the sympathetic dilates the bronchi. In terms of the stomach, the parasympathetic stimulates digestion and peristalsis, while the sympathetic inhibits digestion and peristalsis. In terms of the bladder, the parasympathetic contracts the bladder, causing urinary output, while the sympathetic relaxes the bladder, thereby decreasing urinary output. We also want to talk about the effects of cholinergic drugs. Cholinergic drugs stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system. It causes salivation, lacrimation, urinary incontinence, diarrhea, gastrointestinal cramps, and emesis. On the other hand, anticholinergic drugs inhibit the parasympathetic nervous system. It causes increased heart rate, increased temperature, dilated pupils, decreased bowel sounds, and decreased sweating. There are also drugs that has what is known as sympathomimetic effects. These sympathomimetic drugs stimulate the sympathetic nervous system. And the result will be increased heart rate, increased respiratory rate, increased temperature, and increased sweating. On this patient, I will order chemistry, CBC, PTPTT, cardiac enzymes, urinalysis, toxicology, and an EKG. Head CT should not be routinely ordered on patients with drug overdose unless there are signs of head trauma or neurologic deficits on the physical exam. In closing, be aware that it is possible to narrow down the category of drugs that a person might overdose on. For physical examination, should focus on the eyes, the heart, the lungs, the abdomen, and the skin, and there should be evidence of urinary output. Well, thanks for listening, and I wish you well in caring for patients who present to the ER with drug overdose.